Yo, what is going on, guys? Back here with uh, round 10, day two Swiss, uh, Madison Regional Spot Review. Uh, we got Caleb Gedemir um, <clears throat> playing Buzzrock, uh, Triple Baby Buzz. <clears throat> Clarifying that for this tournament because there's a mix of, uh, of people playing the Triple Baby Buzz and people not. Uh, versus Aaron Tarbell, I believe, uh, playing Zoro Rock. Um, so this matchup is pretty favored for... Um, Buzzwool. Um, actually, Muex can be a really good starter going second. Uh, I'm going first. Is fine too. Uh, going, going first um, <clears throat> or second. Muex can actually be a pretty good starter into the uh, Buzzwool. It's actually not terrible um, because uh, it can't be dealt with immediately. So you get to like kind of care whatever you want usually with the baby Buzzwool. Um, so you have a pretty good start here from Gedimir. Uh, gets a float in play, which is really nice. Energy on the rock buff. I'm not 100% sure the float's correct, um, but Aaron's probably going to have to fill up his bench anyway. So, Because uh, like, the only thing you'd want to do is leave it open for a choice ban um, to make sure you can be able to KO Aaron's uh, Lycan Rock if he gets it online. Um, and he went for the rock ruff over the uh, Remoraid here. He did have the Remoraid in deck because you really want to make sure um, that you... Uh, Start hitting it, knocking out those um, Zerulas uh, as soon as possible. Um, so he goes for the Rock Ruff over the Remoraid. Um, especially early on, you don't need the draw power. It's nice, but it's not necessary. Um, so it's making sure you punch the Zerulas or punch down some, maybe a Rock Ruff with an energy early on. Uh, it's a little bit a little bit more important. Um, definitely worth <clears throat> not going for the um, Tilly early. So Benjin, I was a Brooklet Hill for Rock Ruff, and then he's probably going to Bridget for three Zerua. I uh, can't imagine he would take anything else. He could grab. Uh, he does play the baby buzzwall. I saw. <clears throat> he could grab the baby buzzwall. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm not a big fan of the second rock rough, just because. And I brought this up before. You really just want to draw cards, so you just want to get more Zorix in play. He already has a rock rough in play. Um, I can't imagine what he'd be chasing early on. He may be looking to go after the rock rough, but you have to assume. Uh, that's going to become a oh, it's a pretty pretty solid turn out of Aaron here. Uh, yeah, I think I would have taken a third zero if I was if I was Aaron here, um, especially because you have the enhanced hammer, uh, which means you have a really good chance of just preventing the uh, <clears throat> preventing the um, knockout on your Mew. Um, also, it makes it way harder for him to KO a Rock Ruff. Um, so it makes it way it makes it way harder for him to KO back out of Rock Ruff because now he needs you took you took out his Brooklyn Hill so now he needs if he had Diancy he would have played it last turn because just in case you end so now he needs Diancy strong Lycan Rock he's probably just gonna look to KO as a Rua now uh, we see the energy in hand I actually I think I would have liked to see the Max Elixir to the Reggie Rock here which he does have in hand right now um, Reggie Rock is actually a pretty good attacker in this matchup um, once you work through the Lycan Rock um, Reggie Rock is actually just pretty good. So I think I would really like to have seen the Max Elixir on the Reggie Rock here. To leave that open as an option. And then you probably look for the Sledgehammer on his Arua. And then, you know, go from there. Um, if the energy had stuck active, it would have even been better. He could have had two energy on a Reggie Rock, actually. Um, and then still look for the Sledgehammer on, I mean, whatever he chooses. Um, so we're definitely going to see, yeah, commit energy active. Uh, doesn't even bench the Reggie Rock. I think I would have liked to have seen it come down. And uh, I would like to have seen a Max Elixir's Reggie Rock, I think. I actually think it's a pretty good attacker in this matchup. Uh, Brooklyn Hill, most likely for Remoraid. Uh, there it is. And he's hoping to find Lycan Rock here. Um, another baby buzzwall. He has Octillery in hand. Oh, he's just going to have to settle for the 30 to the Mew. So not a great start out of Caleb. Um, way better looking start from uh, <clears throat> Aaron over here. Um, now he definitely, I think, uh, we just want, I think Aaron will just be chasing down this rock rough. I don't see a reason for him not to chase down the rock rough. Um, he could settle for attacking the active. So he traded once he has mallow in hand. So he's definitely going to mallow, uh, and set up DCE something. He's either going to commit to the, he's either going to knock out active Ramorite or rock rough. I think you knock out rock rough here. Um, it just has the most energy on it. Um, and that's kind of how you like this matchup is so poor for, uh, Zoro rock. That's how you kind of have to play it. And you kind of have to like keep hitting their big whatever is like the biggest threat on board just kind of get rid of it um and then just go from there um and it can be considered octillery because if you shut down the octillery then you can hit him with an end in the late game and hope it sticks um 
trade for the two cards. So he has a Lele for next turn, Floatstone, DCE. So now he's got to choose what he's going to attack with and what he's going to attack. Um, brings up that. Um, so I actually, I would have liked to have seen him probably attack with a Zorark here, actually, because there's a good chance that Mew gets knocked out next turn now. Uh, or not a great chance, but like if he gets strong choice, Diancy. I mean, I guess it would knock out a it would knock out a Zorak too, right? Strong choice, Diancy. No, he'd need the Beast, and he already scarred the Reggie Rock. So yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen him attack with the uh, the Zorak here. So if he attacks with <clears throat> the Mew, Caleb, if he, Caleb gets Diancy, uh, strong choice. Is that enough? Unless I'm missing something. Diancy, strong choice. No, that's enough. So Diancy, strong choice means he knocks out the Mew. Diancy, strong choice does not knock out the Zorak. If he got Beast uh, choice, Diancy would knock out the Zorak. But that's like that you want a Beast energy. I like I like playing around it, and if they hit it, oh well. Especially in this matchup where it's like so rough for Zorak anyways. Um, so I'd like to have seen him attack with the Zorak here. Um, gives him like an extra turn in the game. Baby Buzz comes up, draw, and of course I think we're going to be seeing Caleb dig for that exact combination of cards. Um, Brooklet Hill, Diancy. He doesn't really need anything else. Usually I talk about saving your Brooklet Hill um, when you want until after you would play a supporter. We do see the draw supporter in hand. There's the Cynthia. Um, usually I talk about saving your Brooklet Hill until after the draw supporter, but only thing the only thing Caleb's looking for here is the Diancy. He doesn't want to put GXs in play. He already has the backup Baby Buzzwool. Um, so Aaron's going to be knocking out a Baby Buzzwool as his next prize or one of the one prize attackers, and then Sledgehammer comes online. Um, so he just wants Choice Band. There we go. There's the Choice Band. And that's what I was, this is what I was just talking about. I mean, sure, the Zora could get Jet Punched later on, um, but it means you still have Mew for next turn. Um, Zora could get jet punch later on if it got hit, right? It would get hit for like one, uh, 200 here, right? We get hit for 200. Sure. It doesn't die this turn though. Uh, you force a Buzzwell GX into play because Caleb can actually play around never putting Buzzwell GX in play potentially. Um, uh, potentially. Uh, but yeah, I would have liked to have seen, once again, I would have liked to have seen the Zork come up, I think for the turn for sure. Uh, he sends up a rock rock. I actually don't like this as well. I like because I'm sure he's gonna float stone it. Um, that's why it's coming up. I would like to see a Zorak come up to float stone a Zorak. Uh, it's potential you set this up to a lichen rock with energy, or like if you set up this lichen rock and then you want to multi switch on the other one, and you might need the choice man for that one. Um, it's basically it. Um, here comes baby Buzzwool. So I would like to have seen a Zorak come up and put a float stone on a Zorak. Uh, so Baby Buzzle is actually a great response here. Um, it's going to get answered by Baby Buzzle. Um, but actually, Caleb can just like work around this Baby Buzzle if he has a Guzma and just go to knock out a Zork. Um, probably just get a Cynthia or a Sycamore if he can if he can get rid of the hand, go for Sycamore. Um, I don't think N is actually that great here, uh, personally. Uh, Caleb needs so little for his turn. I don't, really, I don't know how many cards he has in his hand. Let's see. I can't really tell. Um, I don't think N was necessary there. If I was Aaron, I would have just wanted to set up more on my side, thin out my deck more, uh, find maybe look for the double puzzle to pull off a combo next turn. Um, don't worry so much. Like your like Caleb needs uh, he already knocked out your baby puzzle, so that means he needs a Guzma. Drawing forward, Lele still in the deck, all the all, three Ultra Balls still in the deck, uh, has Octillery to draw cards. Like if he wants a Guzma this next turn, he's gonna get it, even if you end him to four, most likely. So I don't I'm not a big fan of the end there. If I was Aaron, I would have just played Sycamore if he could afford to discard what was left in the hand if not go for a cynthia maybe cynthia was priced and he couldn't afford to discard so that's why i went for the end um i didn't see quite what was in hand um we could go back and check though no reason not to go back and check um so he had float uh, let's see float float lele strong uh top deck ultra ball um see i would have just gone for a sick i would have sick him with that away um I, I don't like the end there i'm not a big fan of the end uh, trades twice. So we can go back a little bit more and see what he traded away. Now let's see. N happens. Four, five, three, four, five. Trade away choice. That looks like the worst card in the hand. Two, definitely trade away Ace Arola. Two, he's definitely trading away Ace Arola. Yeah, we got Caleb out here putting on the Zorx for him. All right. Uh, Baby Buzzle comes out, takes a knockout. Um, uh, now Caleb, ooh, he's got a pretty good hand actually going on. So yeah, he can, he would ideally like to knock out a Zorak here, but uh, if it comes down to it, a knockout on the, oh, he's got, he already has the Ultra Ball for the Layla for the Guzma. Yeah, so he's going to look to KO Zorak here, 100%. Send up Diancy, because Diancy would be ideal what to put the Flow Sun on, I think. Um, uh, just grab another Baby Buzz here. I don't think there's any reason to get a Buzz GX. Yeah, just get another Baby Buzz. Um, 
looking to ultra ball uh yeah basic energy sycamore for sure i don't know if you actually you have to grab lele for the i was like i don't know if you actually grab anything every day to grab lele for guzma here lele gonna get a guzma like this is what and this is what i was saying like caleb has so much in his deck to find the guzma and that's like his ideal play on his turn and the brooklyn hill also stuck which means even though uh this i mean it's not this isn't going to be his only uh buzzwall in play so he's like Aaron knows um uh, the Brooklyn Hill is currently in play. He would have to end into a field blower or another parallel city. Uh, not super high odds. I guess it's reasonable. <clears throat> so the, so he's definitely going to find another attacker, even if he goes for this play where he goes the Layla for Guzma. He'll probably have another attacker in play. Um, so I'd like to have seen Aaron just set up more on his side, kind of thin out his deck. Because um, from this point on, Aaron has to end like every single turn of the game. Um, so that's why I would have liked to have seen him just sick him more to try and set up to make his ends better. All right, let's see what uh, Caleb gets. Hits the Max Elixir. It's a pretty big hit on that Max Elixir if he isn't able to find a B-string this turn, actually. Um, attach, Guzma Zork, and he's going to get a Fresh Artillery for five. Um, so that's basically what I was saying. Like It's it's very likely Caleb finds uh, Guzma, uh, even if Aaron ends him there. So there's no point in ending. Save the end to make sure you have the end for next turn. There's another end in your deck. More likely to draw an end, right? Um so just play the Sycamore, play the end next turn. Um, Ultra Ball probably just wants to go ahead and play it to thin out his deck if he can afford uh, to get rid of whatever's in the hand. Um, it's Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball, Buzzle GX. Um, as long as he has another Buzz GX in the deck, it's fine to get rid of it. He's thinking about not playing it down, which I'm fine with. I don't think he needs to play down that Buzzle GX there. Uh, he doesn't want to make it too easy for Aaron. Like if Aaron got... No, that wouldn't be reasonable for Aaron, I guess. I was thinking uh, if Aaron got like uh, Lycanroc GX, me, double puzzle for Mew DCE, knock out the Buzzwall on the bench, but then he just needs an energy on this ba baby Buzzwall. So I actually, I think it was um, probably correct for Caleb to bench that because it's never really in danger. I mean, I guess if Aaron got the multi-switch, other Lycanroc attached to this Lycanroc, KO the Buzzwall GX, that, okay, that's where it would be in danger, I guess. So yeah, I guess it's right to hold on to it. Um, you want to force a KO on another non-GX. Yeah, so holding is definitely correct there then from uh, from Aaron. <laughs> Oh, not from Aaron, from Caleb, holding holding the Buzzle GX. Uh, so we saw the first trade from, maybe we saw both trades. Oh, he only has one trade right now. All right, so there's an Ultra Ball. I think he has to go Lele for N. He's going for Lycanroc. Um, I'm not sure what his plan is here. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't quite know what he's looking at. If he has a multi-switch, I guess I, I he's probably going to look to KO. Oh, he has Kakui, right? Yeah. Uh, multi-switch would be the best. I don't see multi switch, so he blowers those two. Like and rock up that, but he's going down to three prizes, which means, uh, what's it called is still active. Um, so I don't like this rock rock bench. I don't think Aaron plays three. I don't think Aaron plays three Lycan Rock. So I don't know why he benched this Rock Rock. If any of your Lycan Rocks die, you lose. Leave this bench space open for a Lele, because if this gets knocked out, you lose. Okay. So if a Lycan Rock gets knocked out, you lose. You only play two Lycan Rocks, so the, you'll never evolving this. If this gets knocked out, you lose. So leave the bench space open to bench a Lele to get an end. You don't have N in hand currently. Um, so that Rock Rock bench makes no sense right there. Um, it doesn't do anything actually at all. Um, uh, you could have also just like not ultra balled away the Zora calf and ultra balled away this and bench the Zerua. Um, that would have also been fine. Actually, that might have been the best move. Probably leaving it open to find N is actually the best way to go about it, um, or to find any supporter later to find a supporter you would need. Um, so this is this is a pretty easy send up from Caleb. He just needs to find a beast ring and he wins. Um, if not, he can just punch this and then set up. Uh, at this point, you just put a Buzzle GX in play. You ultra ball for Buzzle GX, um, and then go look for beast ring. I think on your turn. Ultra Ball Ford, or if that's already in the hand, just go go start swinging. Uh, you could just try and hit this active Zorak really hard. Um, <clears throat> you could just try and hit this active Zorak really hard, and then you can Jet Punch clean it up later, forcing the Ace Arola play out from the turn on Aaron's side. Um, uh, looks like he's going to Artillery, the Abyssal Hand. Yeah, so just thinning out his deck to make it easier to try and hit the Beast Ring. Beast Ring is what he wants. I don't see Beast Ring. Looks like no beast ring. Once again, though, he can just hit it really, really hard. <laughs> and then go from there. He's got the end. Okay, end's cool here. Um, and if he finds a beast ring off the end to do, he's also good. So end's actually really good here on Caleb's side because it basically means 
uh, Aaron pretty much has to draw, he, like has to draw multi switch, and he has like a way thicker deck now. And there's the beast ring. <laughs> All right, there's the beast ring. Swing around. Uh, Caleb gets game one. Um, I think the play was a little sloppy on Aaron's side. There's a couple things that I made note of. Uh, benching the rock off at the end. I don't think it made sense. Maybe Aaron does play three like rock, but I'm almost positive he doesn't. Um, pretty clean from Caleb's side. The first, the, the attacking with the Mew initially, like you have to try and create any small advantage possible um, on the on the Zoro Rock side. So I think with him attacking with the like the Zorok there at the beginning over the Mew was definitely just correct because like it potentially means Caleb's not drawing two prizes for like another two turns, which is huge. That's huge. You, you delay them by like two turns before they start taking their knockouts. Because once Buzzle starts taking knockouts, they kind of just start rolling. Um, you have to start dealing with their threats. And then stuff like Sledgehammer and Beast Ring come online and then you're just in a horrible position. Um, so I would have liked to have seen Aaron attack with the Zorak there over the Mew initially. I think that could have bought him a lot of time uh, to try and set up more and make bigger plays. Uh, maybe he just commits to two attacks in a row with the Zorak. Um, like knock out rock rock and then second lichen rock knock out uh that way he can get an energy and play on his lichen rock and then he can start rolling from there um, but the way he played it out he just lost the turn for no reason he would have had an extra turn um by slowing caleb down by drawing two prizes if he had just attacked with zork um especially because I, I on caleb's side i didn't like him discarding the reggie rock i actually think reggie rock's really good in this matchup the only thing that can deal with it is lichen rock so if you deal with their lichen rock first or they just don't have the energy and the play it in the right places um, then you force it. They either need to hit the multi switch at the right time, or they just can't answer the Reggie Rock. Because uh, Lele is no longer a really good answer to Reggie Rock because Diancy's uh, choice strong, with one strong KOs a Lele, uh, and Lele is generally the answer to Reggie Rock. You don't really have anything in Aaron's that can actually that can actually answer Reggie Rock besides that. Um, so we'll move on to game two. Uh, Aaron starting the Mew again. He might be running two. That's definitely possible. Um, and I know Aaron, even if uh, he doesn't have a follow-up supporter, he likes going for the, uh, he likes being a little greedy and going for the Bridget. So we see he has no uh, follow-up supporter, but he could go Lele for Bridget. And actually, in this matchup, I kind of agree with it uh, to get greedy. Um, and just, I, he does, he literally does not have a follow-up supporter, but he could go Lele for Bridget. Um, I, would, I, I, would be, I would be fine if he went for Lele for Bridget. It looks like he's going to go with the safe play and go with the Cynthia. Uh, not a huge, as big of a fan of that. I like the greedy. I, I like the greedy play. He's gonna go with an N. I don't know if he mulliganed at all. Um, so fighting active. That N. He got rid of choice bit multi switch. Was there something else he could have gotten rid of? I want to check the ultra ball again. Hmm. Just a parallel city. All right, yeah, I guess that's, that's correct. Yeah, save the Parallel City for that. Yeah, you definitely don't want to play the Parallel City immediately. Oh, and he got a pretty good draw here. He got the energy for Lycanroc. That's like the big the big uh, takeaway here is he got the energy for like. Oh, no, he already attached active. Okay, so actually, I don't know if I like this attachment active. So he only plays one other basic energy. I guess this means he can retreat the Mew, but this means he can't find energy for Lycanroc this turn. That's right, because he attached active to Mew on his initial hand. This means if he ends into Rockruff energy, he can't attach to the Rockruff. Um, and this energy might just get stranded here. I guess he can Claw Slash, but he should be hopefully be able to ride his beating. So I don't know why he's playing for Claw Slash. Um, uh, we don't have a great start here from uh, Caleb, though. There's a Zork. Um, Cynthia Floatstone Field Blower. Definitely going to see the Cynthia. Should see the Floatstone. Yep, Floatstone down to Lele. Lele is the best target. I think Zork's the best target if it's not. Uh, he's going to Field Blower it away. I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't hate it. He's definitely digging hard for the knockout, but Flowstone in play is just like super nice, super important to have just in any deck. Um, and Field Blowers, Field Blowers not great in this matchup. Like it doesn't do that much. The choice bands come down when they're taking knockouts usually. So it's like, and they can either e easily sometimes just take knockouts without the choice bands. Like it's, the Field Blowers not great in this matchup to hold for later. So I don't, I don't hate it. I guess sitting out by that one extra card. All right, he got the DCE. That's what I was talking about. I didn't really like the energy attachment here. I would have much rather then open to the rock rough attachment this funny energy here kind of does nothing especially when you open the mew if you have the mew was on the bench it's a little bit different and it was like your only thing to attach to for the turn only reasonable thing to attach to it's like it's usually better than lele especially the basic fighting because mew can copy uh right it's beating but when it's in your active and they open a uh, buzzle gx it doesn't feel great um i would have much rather have seen him save the turn one energy attachment look for the rock of attachment um and he did hit it uh not that you will always hit it but trade trading away the field blower once again, field blower spine trader. So he plays the double float stone. Um, I think he whiffs the knockout here, though. No, he can claw slash. Okay, so the claw slash does come up, actually, because he didn't hit any bench Pokemon. He just needed one. 
just need one Pokemon. <laughs> so it does come up, I guess, the Claw Slash comes into play. Um, unlikely that, th that he wouldn't be able to find a basic Pokemon on our choice band, but it happens. And it, it de definitely came up clutch here for him to Claw Slash. Uh, Rockruff active. Uh, so I still would have liked to have seen the, the Buzzwool come active here. There's so many top decks for Caleb that he could top deck to make this Buzzwool knock out this Mew. And if you dead draw again, you probably lost anyways. So just play to hit the top deck. We'll see how he plays out the turn. Um, Beast Ring. Unfortunate that it has to be there. Um, float. Oh, he has a float. Okay, so it's fine then. I don't think he top decks float. Um, I'm going to check. <clears throat> yeah, I want to see the top deck. It looks like the top deck super odd. Okay, okay, he had the float the whole time. Um, I don't like this attachment though. I would much rather play to hit this with a baby buzz wool or a. I guess he's down buzz wool GX. I'd rather fi try and find a baby. Like when you play the Cynthia, you're almost 100% kind of find an energy card. Uh, so you should be able to KO this no matter what. Um, but you'd much rather hit this with a baby buzz wool. And you increase your chances a ton. To be able to do that if you don't attach your energy for the turn um so we'll see the cynthia so i would have loved to have seen him hold this energy attachment here and just cynthia first you're never you almost never whiff the energy here um you either you'll hit an energy raw at an office cynthia or you'll find a max elixir or even a beast ring and you can use that to get the energy attachment for a turn so i'd love to see him i'd love to have seen him hold it i think that's kind of a misplay uh on his hand and yeah you see we, we see baby buzzle we see beast energy you don't want to attack here with the Buzzle GX if you don't have to. You'd much rather attack with... Um, uh, I guess he probably top deck Cynthia last turn, actually. Not... Uh, what did I say I thought he top deck? I thought he top deck Super Up. He top deck Cynthia. But that's still you still hold the energy attachment there. <clears throat> this is just this is like this is just kind of unfortunate. Like, Aaron has Flowstone in play. Um, so if Aaron gets... The double puzzle, then he's back, Mew's back and swinging. Uh, you would have much rather have attacked with Baby Buzzle there. So yeah, I, I think pretty sure that that energy attachment from uh, Caleb was a pretty big, uh, pretty big mistake. Actually, I think um, there's no reason to attach it. The chance of you whiffing an energy attachment off the Cynthia is super low. So may as well leave yourself op the option of attacking with the Baby Buzzle instead. I like Regirock coming down though. Regirock's actually a really good attacker in this matchup. We'll see if he sets it up ever it's gonna be hard to set up now that he's so far behind he kind of like missed the whole turn of finding max elixirs um so he just might not be able to set up the uh the reggie rocket anytime soon uh, and we definitely i think we're definitely gonna want to aaron's definitely gonna look for the uh double puzzle i don't see it so i don't think it's happening kakui he's digging deep oh mewtwo choice band no dc though so <clears throat> oh, we did see the GX attack from Caleb, too. I'm not a big fan of that either, actually, I don't think. Uh, Aaron's hand was pretty big. Uh, Caleb knows Aaron plays Mallow, so all he would need is Lele to trade into double thing, knock this out. I would much rather have seen him keep the GX attack. I think it's about to work out for Caleb here, but I much would have rather seen him keep the GX attack for the Lycanroc later in the game. Uh, yeah, Aaron was pretty hard. He has the Mewtwo, he has the Choice Band, no DCE. Has a puzzle, no second puzzle. So, pretty unfortunate from... Uh, Aaron here actually with that big of a hand and he had no way to find uh it's possible as mallow's prize i don't think he discarded it early and he has no he had no way to find mallow either he had no lele no ultra ball um he's gonna have to settle for attachment enhanced hammer uh, and probably set up the mewtwo to try and put uh caleb on odd prizes <clears throat> yep enhanced hammer no dce it's gonna be a pass all right, I'm not sure what Caleb drew. Nope, we got the beast energy. Uh, you really don't want to attack into the Mewtwo. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think he has to. I think he has a Guzma. Um, this, this this turn shouldn't be too hard for him if he has Guzma. He does have Guzma. He has to bring up the Zark, knock it out. Uh, this, this turn's actually pretty clean from Caleb then. Knocks out the Zark. Uh, here's where N's going to come into play pretty big. Uh, we're going to see Claw Slash plus N's for sure uh from Aaron or he might have the GX. I don't think he can afford to use the GX here because he has to have an answer to this buzzwool. Uh but I guess he could hit another strong. Uh which means you want to put the choice band down now on this. Unless he's gonna GX no he could GX the buzzwool GX here actually. That would be that would be uh that might just lock up the game. And this is why I really didn't want to see this GX go out of play, but his bench is so small actually it might not have mattered. 
Uh, yeah, that's right. He can just knock out this Cultural GX this turn. Uh, and we're going to see a really weird game <clears throat> where I think Caleb might have to end them both down to two unless he top decks. Uh, so we should see, should see uh, I would say Ultra Ball for a Buzzle GX here. He has the Ultra Ball. Oh, no, he could get for a Lele. Uh, he might have Lele in hand. I can't really tell. Um, he maybe has to end here, though, because of Caleb's hand size. Because all Caleb really needs is another strong... Um, Actually, I don't like this choice been placing here because you Caleb. I mean, Aaron would ideally want to win in in two turns. Uh, if he goes another strong, he's at he's doing one seventy with Claw Slash. Um, that's not enough to KO Ready Rock. That's not enough to KO Buzzle GX. So this choice made up here means he could get Guzma Energy. So yeah, I don't like this energy. The choice man placement on the Mewtwo much more, especially when he's down to float. Uh, I would have much rather seen the like you're never gonna float this out of the active. Put the choice man on the active, right? Because if the only thing the choice way does on the Mewtwo is that when there's a Buzzle GX with three energy knuckle impacting, uh, you can respond to it. If if a Buzzle GX ever knuckle impacts, you've already lost the game. <laughs> like you're definitely just lost. So there's no reason for Aaron to ever put the choice band here instead of on the Lichen Rock. Uh, the choice band should have 100 percent been on the Lichen Rock. <laughs> it looks like he's gonna go for Diancie and probably just plant a Sledgehammer. Um, Diancie attach Beast N maybe. He's gonna go for the N. Um, I think he he probably I think he has to actually because Aaron's Aaron's hand was so big that you couldn't really afford to put down the Lele. I don't think. Um, I mean after this choice band placement though, I would have checked his discard pile. He'd been like he's at a choice band maybe, but like a double puzzle. Aaron's hand was pretty big. A double puzzle was definitely possible. Um, I think also on Caleb's side, I would have discarded the. I think he went with the. Uh, let's take a look. What he discard, off the Ultra Ball. He ends up discarding the the strong and the fighting energy. I would have discarded the uh, fighting energy and the rem octillery because uh, it's very unlikely you find remoraid in this turn at all. Because um, uh, he goes for the diancy here, uh, it's very unlikely you find uh, octillery like ever here. Um, <clears throat> he also had all of his max solicitors left, so he could have gone for. No, he wouldn't have gotten that close to a knockout. Um, it's very un un unlikely you ever set up the Octillery. So I would like to have seen him keep the strong in the deck to increase the chances of doing the swing around next turn. Um, you're really just hoping Aaron whiffs energy here. Um, <clears throat> oh, he does find the Brooklet Hill. So he gets <laughs> one of his two cards at Brooklet Hill. He's gonna go for it, but he goes for a baby buff, so he doesn't even go for the Remoraid. Um Nuts card in hand is Max Elixir. Four five six. He's looking for the swing around. Alright, so he's gonna get the swing around. Uh, maximum one seventy. Both both GXs are unfortunately gone, which means he can't jet punch clean it up if he gets double heads uh, anytime soon. We don't know what Aaron got. Aaron just looking for an energy card. <clears throat> All right, tails looking for at least the heads. There we go. We always want to at least break fifty, break even. So this is one fifty, I think, is going down. <clears throat> so see puzzle something. N, N baby buzzle puzzle. Not great from Aaron. We are actually, I think we're going to have to see him. So we'll see the Brooklyn Hill. Get a rock rough if there is one. There we go. We're going to have to see Aaron, I think, N into an energy here for him to have a chance. Um, and even then it's close because uh, Caleb could just top deck energy himself. He's going to puzzle for the top three, actually. There's DCE. I wonder if he's burning it before the N. Um, that's pretty reasonable. It's unlikely he draws double puzzle off the end, so you want to <clears throat> increase your chance of drawing anything off the end. So he's just going to retreat. Uh, the baby buzzle. I guess he's looking for the... Yeah, so now he's the DC for the Mewtwo on the next turn. Uh, Caleb draws. He would have needed pretty much Guzma here. Oh, I guess Lycanroc works too. I can't tell what's in his hand. It's a fight. It's a strong energy. Uh, knockout. There's the DC and an N. Oh, it's a Guzman in his hand too. Uh, so he could have KO'd the Rock Rock to close out the game there, or the Lycan Rock. Uh, he can still draw. He can also still draw Lycan Rock too. Um, we're gonna see retreat to Mewtwo swing. Um, ooh, Parallel City. <sighs> ooh, I don't know about that. Is unless Lycan Rock's in the discard pile. That was a win condition right there. Uh, bring up the Lycan Rock to win the game. 
I don't know how relevant the Yeah, I actually think that was just a big mistake from Caleb there. He didn't check his card at all. No, he checks. I think he maybe top decks the Sycamore. So this is doing... You're doing 70 with the Diancy, so that two shots the Mewtwo already. I think that was just a big mistake from Caleb. Let's take a look at it again. Because the Lycanroc's on the bench with 160... N puts it down. He does check it, right? He doesn't just... Okay, he checks it. So he knows what it is. Parallel Cities. And then he gets rid of the rock off with no Lycan Rock in the discard pile. And this is already doing 70, which means it already two shots to Mewtwo. Is he somehow getting like another? No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a big mistake from Caleb there. Getting rid of the, the rock off when he could potentially top deck Lycan Rock or a way to find it. You always send up this there anyways. And I think he has Lycan Rock in hand here, actually. Uh, yep, he has like a rock in hand. Oh, yeah, I think it's just a big mistake on Caleb's side. There's no reason for him ever to have gotten rid of the rock rough over the Reggie rock there, except for the free retreat. But you're always pushing Buzzwell almost always, anyways. And he needs to two shot it with the Mewtwo, so it's not really in danger. Um, you have two turns, uh, so he would have had just had, had game there had he just uh sent up the uh, had he just sent up the uh, or had he just discarded the Reggie rock and sent up this off the uh draw uh wonder tag he's just sitting out the deck i'm not sure about that here um can you use mine going with sycamore sure i'm not sure why he's wonder tagging now it's possible he gets end next turn which means you want lele in the deck he really wants to hit this max elixir i guess he does have the max elixir okay um i don't know if he, he doesn't have fighting energy in hand though so hitting the max elixir is not that important you can just bop it for 70 and then bop it for 70 next turn you have the you have one prize left He's not even going to play the Max Elixir, so why was he thinning so hard? Another mistake from Caleb. There's no reason to play this Lele. If he gets end again, he wants Lele in the deck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, that Rockruff play, though, was a big mistake on Caleb's side. Um, he was already two-shotting. The, the big thing to note here is he was already two-shotting the Mewtwo. Um, and the only thought process that I can think of that he went through is if he hits, if he finds and hits Max Elixir, then this buzz will um, KO's Mewtwo. Um... I think it's more likely you draw a supporter, and then even if you draw a max elixir off the supporter, you're not guaranteed to hit it. Um, but if you find Ultra Ball or Lycanroc, that's a guarantee. Uh, you also could get double. I mean, no, you don't need double. Just want to change the thing. Um, but yeah, I definitely. That, yeah, he's card in the rock off. I don't like that. Not sure where he's going to put it yet. He might put it on the other baby buzzle, actually. <clears throat> he puts two here. Uh, yeah, he'd have to be scared of Aaron's Kakui. Uh, but Aaron has like a two card hand. This is already two shine the Mewtwo, but I guess he could go into Lele is the is the only thing you're you're scared of there. He already played a supporter, so he can't play another supporter. He's just gonna pass. Okay, wow. I didn't expect that. I don't know if I like that either. Especially why would you play down the Lele immediately? I guess he was just afraid of Parallel City. Uh I guess he knows he plays Ace of Roll, so this could be Ace of Roll, but then this could just knock out the rock up anyways. He's afraid of enhanced hammer, maybe. I think I would have just swung there. I'm not sure. Um, I think we see... What do we see on Aaron's side? I think that's a Guzma. I can't tell, though. Three-card hand. Energy, DCE, something. <clears throat> Guzma. So he's going to have to make a Guzma play here. He knows he has Sycamore in hand. Um, so energy to rock. Uh, like and rock, it looks like. One prize left. Guzma up. One prize left. Probably just bring up Diancy, right? Like, has the highest retreat cost. He's just setting up the Lycan Rock. Okay. I. Whoa, I don't know about that. Could have sent up Lele. Now, if Caleb finds Floatstone. Um, I also wasn't a big fan of Caleb using the Lele immediately. I would have much rather seen him wait in this situation in case he needs a Guzma. He also could have just gotten Guzma off Lele. Um, and that pretty much. That, I mean, that does just seal up the game pretty much for him. Um. Brooklyn Hills. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that Lele use either. The, the Lele use doesn't really make any sense, especially if he gets end again. Um, Sycamore. He needs to hit Floatstone. Uh, he only has one left, I believe. And we don't see it. So I think that's going to be the game here. Uh, I think Aaron's going to take game two. He even shows him the DC. Yep, there we go. Game two. Uh, 
So it should have been a should have been a two zero from Caleb. Uh, it was a little sloppy there at the end. The rock off this card really just didn't make any sense to me at all. Um, yeah, I was a little confused by that one. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> going into game three, uh, Caleb's going first, which is like a big. I feel like that's like the big difference or a big big uh like when Buzzwell goes first in this matchup, it feels impossible. Uh, I feel like for um. Zoro Rock. I feel like the match is almost impossible for Zoro Rock. Um, <clears throat> when Zoro Rock goes first, they have like a way better chance. But I feel like when Buzzle goes first, it's like it's such an uphill battle, man. Oh, let's see what he's gonna go for. Looks like Rock Ruff. Yeah, you just want to be able to chase down, uh, especially now that he knows that Aaron plays the two float. And let's see, in case he didn't know before, you just want to be able to chase down Zerula. So if he gets like float into Mewtwo or something, you're fine spending your turn going Lycan Rock, bring it up, knock it out. Um, he has his own float. I like this. I like attaching. This is a big thing I like. Oh, I like the float on the active too. Because uh, now you can swing it with this and then he has the mobility to this. I really like this. This is something people don't do enough. Uh, a lot of people would just attach their first energy to the active. Like, I'm going to Sledgehammer next turn. Yes, you are, but you're going to find an energy next turn. You don't need to put your energy this turn on uh, the active buzz wool. Um, hit. Um, I don't know where this one actually should go. I think Rock Up is more than more than fine. Yeah, Rock Off is probably just correct. This is already like this this buzzle is actually insane. It's gonna be able to do a lot of work with just with where it's at right now. The pass. Um early blower, not a big deal. Looks like we're gonna see the Oh, we'll see Lele for Bridget and he has the strong energy for the attachment. So might actually get a decent game out of this game three. They don't have a ton of time left, they have 13 minutes. Um, so I, I think this one might be one of those games where it might be impossible for Zoro Rock to actually win in time. So it'll be down to just if, if Caleb can pull out the win because uh, Aaron needs to kind of prolong the game a lot more to actually figure out ways to draw his prizes and like start any Caleb, especially when Caleb has this good of a start um, <clears throat> for for Aaron to actually win. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Caleb with the draw. It's a goose. Uh, if he can KO the Rock Ruff, you definitely want to go for it. Um, so if he has Diancie here, he can. Get the KO on the Rock Ruff. There it is. We should be see the KO on the Rock Ruff here. Uh, there we go. Don't get Reggie Rock. <laughs> uh, initially got Reggie Rock. Definitely want Diancie here. Um, there's no reason uh, not to KO the Rock Ruff here. I don't think. Yep. Guzma up Rock Ruff. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an energy. Oh, he Ultra Balled away in energy. So I don't know if I like that. Hang on. Let's see what he let's see what he Ultra Balled away. Oh, does he, uh, he should have an energy attachment for turn here. Um, I don't like not attaching for turn. Uh, but it depends what he discarded. Um, so we'll see. Cynthia. Okay, I would ultra ball away the Cynthia here. I would I would attach for turn 100%. I don't know why he's not attaching for turn. Attaching for turn is such a big deal with this deck. Getting your... Uh, you have a... Even though, so ultra ball away the choice band. Yeah, I would ultra ball away the choice band. Uh, he ultra ball away Cynthia fighting. Ultra ball away the choice band. Put your energy in play for turn. I would maybe even attach it to the active buzzwool. Um, so that way you can kill KO at whatever becomes uh, Tarbell's active. Um, yeah, I would have. I don't like. I'd ultra ball away the choice band. Attach for turn somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where. I think active. I think I would have actually attached to my active Buzzwool there. Um, this needs one energy. So the only thing that can respond to the Buzzwool GX for a knockout is Mew EX. Uh, you one shot that with Sledgehammer as a response. If not, Buzzle GX can KO anything in the active. Yeah, I don't like that play at all from Caleb. Um, ultra Balling away the energy. They Ultra Ball away the choice band. Attach the basic energy to the Buzzle GX. 100%. I don't... I'm not a big fan of what he, of that play right there. <clears throat> um, especially when it looks like Lele's is Aaron's best response. Um, then... <clears throat> then you want to be able to KO it next turn. No reason not to want to KO it. And if, if, and if he does get out the, the Mew EX play, um, if Aaron does pull off the Mew EX re response, that, that's fine. Then you have Sledgehammer to follow up. It's a one energy attack. You didn't need to like set up for it. You should have an energy in your hand next turn. Um, does not look like a great hand from Caleb. Uh, I see a Guzma at least. Maybe that's a Cynthia actually. So he, should, he might be fine. Max Elixir energy. Uh, see, then this is the, the, act, the actual situation just came up. If he just had attached to his active uh, Buzzwool, he would have just knocked out Lele. Um, and if Mew responded, he has energy in hand to Sledgehammer the Mew. Um, yeah, just Ultra Ball away the Choice Band there. Get your energy. Your energy attachment for turn is equal or greater to the damage output that Choice Band will bring. There's no reason 
to ever uh, try and save a choice man over attaching an energy for turn, unless you're miles ahead. Uh, but he's not miles ahead in the game yet. So that was actually, that was pretty poor, I think, on Caleb's side. Uh, we'll see. He went Guzma Zarua. This seems fine. Uh, Max Elixir and Beast Ring. Um, I don't know where he's going to put this. Because he has the Beast Ring in hand, it makes it a little awkward of where to put it. Uh, but he's just going to commit it there on the uh, Buzzle GX. So this is actually really awkward for uh, Tarball now because uh, he's down to the two prizes, but now he already has a basic energy on there, and now he has to commit a... And this is why if you play the baby Buzzwell in Zoroark, you should 100% just play four strong energy. Um, there's no reason not to play four strong energy if you play in the baby Buzzwell. There's too many numbers that the baby Buzzwell can hit with the strong energy compared to the basic energy, like uh, knocks out Lele with the choice band, uh, knocks out other baby Buzzwells. Um, so if you play the baby Buzzwell, if you, and you want to play the baby Buzzwell in Zoroark, put play four strong just commit to the four strong there's not enough enhanced hammer in the format that it should actually scare you that much to want to try and play the basic energy there's some cute things you can do with basic energy but not to the point where you don't want to just boost the baby buzzle definitely boost boost up the baby buzzle uh, we probably won't see a knockout here uh just get rid of baby buzzle i think you have to keep the antsy especially being down so many choice bands <clears throat> yep goodbye baby he's thinking really hard about this okay my favorite card, Timer Ball. See at least one heads, maybe two. Just going to get another Zorark in play, I assume. Yep, looks like just one heads. If it was two heads, you would still thin out the other Zorark. Maybe even trade it away. Um, <clears throat> definitely wants to see a um, strong energy for KO on active. Uh, this is going to be hitting it for 120. Or at least a, another basic energy to attach to the bench rock rough. This is rough from uh rough from Tarbell here. Yep. Rock Ruff comes down. And 120. That feels bad, man. Oof. I think we have the jet punch knockout here on um on a Zorark. Um he could also take out the Rock Ruff. I don't think that's super important right now though. Um let's see, he's doing Caleb's doing 200. He needs the Raji Rock, um, and he can take out the fresh Thor arc, actually. Oof. And that also means if this Buzzwell is then dealt with, he has... <clears throat> oh, so he needs to find, actually... Uh, well, he can use Energy to Retreat here. Flowstone, ideally. Energy to Retreat here is fine, though, actually. He doesn't really care about the Energy. Attack. And if this Buzzwell gets dealt with, then he has Sledgehammer as a response. That's why I really like the Raji Rock. He can get the clean Thor arc knockouts. All right, you got beast energy to retreat. It's not great, but um, you're fine with it. You're not, uh, yeah, you don't really care. Um, could have also just commit choice man active and hit it with baby buzz. It's not as good though. You just commit and retreat and take that knockout though. Um, oh, whoa. Whoa, I do not like this. Hold on. <clears throat> so let's see. He had the knockout, right? Choice ban, 100, 200, 210. Or 100, 110, 220. Yeah, he could have just retreated and knocked this out. Um, he does put it in Jet Punch range. But I would have just taken the knockout here. Cut off one of one of Tarbell's trades. Um, I think we are now going to see... Ooh, now, now we can see some big plays out of Tarbell, I think. He's got double puzzle. He's got multi-switch. I would have just taken that Zorak out. Um, we might see Lele for Mallow here, actually, to set up the... F I don't know what his, his full game plan is. He's just going to go for second trade, I think, and hope to get stuff he needs. Now he's Wonder Tagging. Isarola. Isarola's pretty good. Yeah, see, I don't like this. Oh, it's just it's just so unnecessary when, you when like, if this Buzzwell does get dealt with, you just have Sledgehammer. Like, there's no reason to get this fancy on Caleb's side. Um, sure, he sets up this play to draw all four prizes in one turn, but like Tar Tarbell just has the Ace Arola, and that like now you just did nothing for your whole turn. Um, yeah, he should have just come up and jet punched this. And if this Buzzle doesn't get dealt with you in the game, if it, this Buzzle does get dealt with, you have Lycan Rock that needs an energy to go. Sledgehammers online, you just need to find an energy. Like, <sighs> yeah, that's just like so extra on uh, 
Caleb's side for no reason, I feel like. Um, he, that could have been, like, so much cleaner. And I think he would have already just won the game if he had just, you know, play, just, like, take the knockout. He shot off one of his trades. Uh, he's already got, like, nothing going for himself anyways. Um, and now it's going to get way harder for Caleb. Actually, to the point where he might time out or the time might time out, and then he, it ends up in a tie. I mean, we'll see uh, We'll see what Caleb has on his turn. I assume he had Guzma in hand if he was setting up that play. Um, so he should have Guzma, which means you just take out the Rockruff here and probably push 30 more to this Zorark with the 30 on it already. Because um, the Rockruff's the only real threat now. Um, so he has Layla for Goose. Um, he would have won anyways if he had just done the other play. Um, but I guess Aaron probably would have ended if he had done the other play. But then once again, you have so much, so many things you can just follow up with. It's actually insane. You have the Lycanroc, you have Sledgehammer. Uh, if the Buzzle even gets dealt with, if the Buzzle doesn't get dealt with, you probably just win the game, like I said. Um, <clears throat> Ultra Ball thinning out the deck. Probably should grab another BB Buzz. I think he has to go for the Jet Punch here on the Rockruff. He might be trying to win in two turns, but his hand doesn't look like it allows him to win in two turns. He's going for the Zorak here. Um, now, I don't like this. Ah, I guess I don't hate it because then one energy here will knock out the this. But they, now you just knock out this with the the Lycanroc. If you knock out this with Lycanroc plus N, which he should just have in hand. Like, that's not hard to have on Tarbell's side. Uh, Caleb just doesn't have a response. So I think here you jet punch this Rock Ruff. Um, and that leaves Caleb with no... I mean, that leaves uh, Aaron with no threats. The only thing Aaron can do for, Aaron can do from there is bring up Mew EX, knock out this, and then you claw slash that or GX it. Um... And then ideally claw slash it and then GX the next turn and you should win the game. Uh, this makes it really awkward for Caleb now because now Caleb can get end in this. He, it's not a very safe setup on Caleb's side. He could have had to be super safe if he had just Guzma knocked out this. Um, if he had just gone for the Guzma knockout on this, um, it would have been a super safe setup. Now we're going to definitely see from Aaron uh, Rockruff come up, uh, bring up this, end, and then GX knock out the Buzzwool. Um, and now on Caleb's field, there's no way to deal with a Lycanroc. Um, or if you just preemptively deal with the Lycan, uh, the Rockruff, you don't have to deal with the Lycan Rock. Yep, here we go. Rockruff. Draw. Zorak Evolve. Uh, double Puzzle for Timer Ball or Ultra Ball. Get the Lycan Rock. Get N if he doesn't have it. Yep, Lycan Rock's in the discard pile. Lycan Rock Strong. Yep. Here we're going to see Double Puzzle for Lycan Rock Strong. Oof. Could he get off a big Claw Slash? That would actually be sick. If he could just Claw Slash knock out the... Uh... <clears throat> The Lycan Rock on, uh, or the Buzzwall on Caleb's bench. Double Puzzle. Lycan Rock strong, I think. Maybe Lycan Rock something else. He has the multi switch in hand, so we can already GX it. Thinking, thinking. It's going to be Lycan Rock strong. Evolve. Bring up the Buzzwall. See, and this, like, Caleb could have had such a safe setup if he had just KO'd this Rock Ruff. You just KO the Rock Ruff, Jet Punch it 30 more on that, like uh, the Zork that already had 30. Uh, if he responds with the Mew EX and you don't get the energy, boom, you have Lycan Rock with the GX deck. If you have the energy, Claw Slash, even better. And then you have GX to close out the game, and there's like no way for Tarbell to, because he couldn't have benched a Rock Ruff that turn if he puts down Mew. Um, so there would be no way for uh, Tarbell to win the game then. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, trade away Bridget. One, two. Multi switch double puzzle. Again, he got the extra. Uh, Caleb shows his hand. Uh, baby puzzle not activated. Um, can't use baby puzzle. Looks like he's going to have to go for a claw slash here. Oh, man. Here's the max elixir, at least. <clears throat> and we're going to see the claw slash for 130. 140 with the Red Rock, actually. Um, so Aaron's not safe to leave this active. Um, Caleb's currently doing 60 damage with the... Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Baby Buzzwell. We're going to probably have to see uh, Aaron retreat into Baby Buzzwell himself and just smack the Rockruff as a response. Uh, maybe Ace Arola. Ace Arola's pretty good here, actually. Reset up the Lycan Rock. Um like to see trade first out of Aaron no matter what. I don't think he's ending this turn. He's just going to assume that his opponent's locked up for a turn. So let's just trade away that other Bridget I see in hand. And then probably Ace Arola. Ooh, Parallel City's cute. And I guess for the Lele, though, it's not a huge deal. Um, I don't think I really like the Parallel City, actually. I would like to see him trade first. Let's see a trade first. Come on, come on, trade first. Uh, don't you have a Bridget in hand? Did I miss something? Multi-switch seems like it could be pretty good eventually. All right. 
Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the parallel city unless he's limiting his own bench, which I guess he could get rid of his own Zorak. Um, okay, gets rid of his own Zorak. I actually like that. He's got a big hand, so um, he's assuming he's gonna be able to like uh, pull out the rest of the game here. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. Get rid of own Zorak. Um, oh, it's gonna make him. Be, it looks like he's gonna be able to let him play into a tie. Actually, I just noticed that time was up. Um, so I think it's turn zero for Aaron. Um, <clears throat> so actually, I think we're gonna see a tie now because of that. Um, Unless we see, couple, we could see a strong energy or something out of uh, Caleb. He's definitely KOing this. Um, but it looks like Lele would maybe be able to get the response KO. Um, so turn one for Caleb. Max Elixir. Whiff. It's a big whiff. If he has a supporter here, though, he can still set up for the swing around to knock out a Lele. Claw Slash knocks out the, the Buzz Wool. Um, looks like an energy though. It's not great. We're gonna see the claw slash though. Yeah. So once again, uh, oh, man, Caleb would have definitely won this game if he had just if he had just dealt with the rock rough though. Like, there's so sure time was coming up, so it draws a prize one turn later. But he had well, time wasn't up yet, so you're never turn. Um, you always have plus two turns, so that's two turns to knock out two Pokemon. So if we had just seen Caleb knock out the rock rough, get rid of the lichen rock threat with the jet punch. Uh, if Aaron's response is the Mew X, you have two answers for that. Um, if it's not, then you just win the game because the buzz will live, right? Um, also, earlier in the game, when he didn't just jet punch, knock out the Zorark, and he just let it sit there, and then Aaron had the Ace Arola response. Um, there was just, it was so greedy of him to just like be like, I, you don't care if you burn those two energy there. Because if he responds to the Buzzwool, Sledgehammer is online. You have Lycanroc ready to go. They're both one energy from being able to attack. You don't care that you just lost those two energy to get that knockout on that Zorark. Oh, it was a little, it's a little frustrating to see from Caleb because he is such a uh, great player. Uh, we see a Guzma stall from Aaron over to Caleb. Choice Bin, Sycamore. Oh, if we see the float, I think that's going to be it. He's, he's calculating his odds. Uh, all right. I think I saw it. Woo. Caleb gets it on the last turn of time there. All right. So he still managed to pull it out. It should have been cleaner, though, from Caleb. Um, I think the game, the games from Aaron were overall pretty clean. Um, let's see. Uh, game one, I think the big thing was just attacking with the Mew attack over attacking with the Zorak. You have to try and create an edge somewhere with Zorak. This matchup is really rough for Zorak. You have to use all... All these the little things you can to try and create an edge. Uh, it was actually a pretty sloppy from Caleb, but the matchup, like once again, is so good that even if you play a little sloppy on the side, it's you're still gonna win uh, a lot of the time. The matchup is very favored. Um, besides a couple of obviously, I mean, Caleb played a great game uh, or a pretty clean game, um, but there was a couple things that like I, I felt were like uh, pretty major uh, slip ups um, and like easily avoidable. Like it's just kind of like if you get rid of your opponent's only major threat in play, they can't win the game, right? <laughs> If you just draw knock, take knockouts like on the Zork, they can't win the game. All right, enough about that. That's gonna do it for round ten. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, share, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you don't know, I do stream on Twitch. I uh, stream PTCG on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. All that stuff in the description down below. Uh, I'll be back with round eleven soon. Have a good day, guys, and peace.